Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to integrate these Crestron uh, TSW touch panels with Home Assistant. I'm going to walk you guys through the basic system configuration on these panels and Home Assistant to make all of this work. And it's really not as difficult as you would think. So for this tutorial, I've actually gone ahead and pulled up a brand new installation of Home Assistant. Um, and there's one plugin I want to show you all that is really useful for this installation. So here's the GitHub page for it, um, which I'll link down below. And you're going to install this through Hacks, which is something that you hopefully already have on Home Assistant. If you don't, you need it. Really easy to install. It allows you to use a bunch of third party plugins with Home Assistant. And what this plugin will allow you to do is it will uh, one, it'll add an idle screen for your panel. It'll automatically make it go black or display an image. Uh, it'll also allow you to hide the navigation stuff on Home Assistant. So loading into Home Assistant, you can see I've already got hacks pulled up. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and search wall panel here and you can see Lovelace wall panel is the first thing that comes up. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that and we will download it. And we'll go ahead and reload our browser here just so we can take a look at it. So now what we need to do is head over to our dashboard that we want to use on the touch panel. Once we're in the edit screen here, we can actually click on the little hamburger menu here and click raw configuration editor. And this is going to bring you to a screen with some text on it. I'm going to go ahead and come down here a couple lines and uh, I'm going to go ahead and paste this in. This will be in the description as well. This is just a basic set of options here to configure wall panel for these screens here. This is also available on the GitHub page, it's the same thing. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we're gonna enable the wall panel. It's gonna hide the toolbar, which is the top bar here. And it's gonna hide the sidebar as well, which is this bar right here. So now you can see if we reload the page, it only shows you what you have in your dashboard layout. So how do we edit this page now? Cause you can see all of our buttons are gone. All we have to do is come up to the uh, URL bar here at the top and type in question mark wp underscore enabled equals false. And that's gonna go ahead and bring those back for us. So now let's go ahead and switch over to the touch panel and I'm gonna show you the configuration process from here. All right, so here we are on the touch panel and what we're gonna do here is hold down five fingers uh, at the same time. And it's gonna take about 10 or 15 seconds here and then you're gonna see it's gonna actually reboot the panel and bring us to an admin page where we can make some changes to it. Now, if you're brought to this screen and you don't know what the password is, all you have to do is flip the panel around and find the little reset hole on it. And you're gonna stick a paper clip in there and hold the button down while it reboots 11 times. And then once you've done that, you can do the same process again, hold the five fingers, and it'll bring you to this screen where you can log in with a username and a new password. Okay, so here we are. You guys can see I've gone ahead and logged in. And right now, this panel has a static IP set on it, which we don't want. We want to go ahead and bring this onto the same network as our home assistant installation. So to do that, we're going to come over here to Ethernet setup. And you can see here, it gives us a few options in here, but the big one is DHCP enable. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And you can set a custom host name if you want, do whatever you want. Um, but we're going to go ahead and just back out of this screen. And we're going to head over here to application selection. And what we want to do on here is scroll down just a little bit until we see EMS. I'm going to go ahead and select that and hit confirm selection. Okay, so the panel's gone ahead and rebooted and we're presented with the EMS web page. And you can see here under my router's management page, we have this brand new DHCP lease, which we can actually head over to. And you can see we've got the Crestron admin page. Okay, so now once we've logged in, we're presented with this admin page. We're gonna go ahead and head over to the settings here. And we can go ahead and scroll down and find applications at the very bottom. You can see we've got the EMS option already selected. And we can change the URL right here. So we'll go ahead and copy this, paste it in there, and hit Save Changes. And you actually don't have to reboot. You can just hit No, uh, or you can reboot the panel if you feel better about that. But now I'm going to go ahead and switch back over to the camera, and we're going to set up the Home Assistant page on our touch panel. OK, so here we are on the touch panel. You guys can see it's gone ahead and rebooted and presented us with the Home Assistant login page here. OK, so I've gone ahead and typed in my login details here. I'll just go ahead and hit the login button here and you can see after just a couple seconds, it's going to present us with the dashboard. You can see pages on here load really slowly for the first time, but I believe a firmware update actually fixed that issue because I don't seem to have it on that panel. So uh, just be mindful of that. And what's cool is because we're using that um, Lovelace wall panel add on, you can see it just does a little slideshow here for us after a couple seconds of inactivity. So I'm a huge fan of that. 
um, but if we tap it, it'll wake back up. So you guys can see now I can turn on and off the desk lamp here, and I've also got some more control over WLED, so if I tap that there, you can see I've got a bunch of controls here, and you can add in pretty much whatever you want on here. So anyway guys, that's it uh, for these Crestron touch panels. That is how you configure them to integrate with Home Assistant. In my opinion, they work really well. The only thing you're missing is some of the sensors and stuff on these panels, the microphone, uh, stuff like that is not currently working under Home Assistant, but with some basic SSH communication, you actually can configure these panels to integrate even better with Home Assistant. You can add in brightness controls, sleep and wake, all kinds of stuff. So. Um, that'll be in a future video if y'all want to see that. But that's it for me today, guys. I hope this video helped y'all out. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one.